other features of, I guess this is my little diagram. This is how you'll understand it best, okay? Now again, I told you, it really looks like spaghetti. I've drawn it like little lines, these chromosomes, for you to understand, okay? How many homologous pairs do we have here for this cell? Good, so what's the diploid number? That's for you, muscle for this cell. 2n is a diploid number, but what's the number? 2n equals 4. That's what you're seeing here. Okay, so this is some creature from another species that has four chromosomes. Make sense? How many chromosomes would the gametes have, Tyler? Half of them. Remember, gametes have half the genetic information of a diploid cell because they're haploid. Haploid means half. Okay, very good. Now, coming to this, you see the X shape. So straight away, what phase are we in? Oh, very good. Now, do you all see what else is happening here? The nuclear membrane is starting to break down. Why is that? You have to think about what's going to happen next. What, what happens in metaphase? Yeah, right? I remember one thing for metaphase. Metaphase equals N for middle liner. It lines up along the middle of the entire cell. So it needs to get out of the nucleus. It's very tiny, the nucleus, right? So that's why I remember the nuclear membrane has started to degenerate. Now, something needs to line everything up in the middle. What is that something? So they must form by prophase. Does that make sense? So those are the two big things that happen in prophase. Membrane starts to disappear. Spinal fibers start to form. That's it. Make your life easy. Don't need to memorize anything else. Okay? Now, what's happening in metaphase? In the middle lineup of chromosome. It's that simple. It's all you need to remember. Okay? What about anaphase? What happens in anaphase? Yeah? The upper the spindle starts to pull away the poles of the... What did the spindle fibers attach to, bro? Very good. So what I said, essentially is the only thing holding those two chromatids together. So when you break apart the centromere, what happens to the chromatids? They spin right around, right? And now since the spindle fibers are pulling it to either end, they'll move to opposite ends. Does that logically make sense? Okay. Now think about this in terms of the genes, right? What did we say? On a chromosome, we have two homologous chromosomes, right, within a pair. And within one homologous pair, one chromosome comes from parent one, the other chromosome comes from parent two. Now, what about genes? Who wants to define a gene for me again? Georgina. Very good. And uh, name and what is it, Alan? Alan. Alan. Give it a go. So, it's a variation of the gene. But Kiara, why don't I draw the horizontal lines? Do alleles lie on the same location or different location to one another? Same, exactly. So, if you imagine this is a trait, this is, let's say, hair color. Right, so this is hair. The alleles would lie on that locus. All the variations of hair color need to lie on that locus, right? So if, if we had the brown hair, allele here, what allele would we have here? Good, why is that? It's the exact same copy. Does everyone agree? This is a twin sister chromatid. But if I asked you all, what allele lies here, what would you say? Could be anything. It's from another parent. Right? Different chromosome come from a different parent. Let's say that was blue. So what alloy must lie here? Easy. Does that make sense? Now, why am I drawing lowercase and uppercase? From the inner recessive. We'll come back to that. I just wanted you to generally know that some traits will mask the other when they occur together. So if you've got a blue eye alloy from dad and a brown, I think I picked hair color, but I'm talking about eye color here. So bear with me. If you inherit a blue eye alloy from a parent and a brown eye alloy from the other parent, one of them is going to mask the other, and you'll only express one, right? That's the principle behind dominance. We'll come back to that. Very good. Now, let me ask Kushi. Kushi, what happens in the process of anaphase here? This is very important, because when I start talking about meiosis, things are going to get more complicated. Uh, in anaphase, the sister chromatids are pulled apart. Very good. Okay, good. They move to opposite ends of the cell. Now, this is where you start seeing this, this curvature in the cell. Does everyone see that? What do we call this? What a funny name. Yeah, it's cell cleavage. That's what you call it. Okay, very good. And what will eventually happen is we go into telophase now. What do you see is, what do you see is happening in telophase? Now, I want someone to give me a way to think about this, not just blurt out 
content. How do I think about, if I forget my exam, I'm sitting there just see, I just forgot what happened in telephase, how am I going to remember? Yeah, you see some pinching, that's more cytokinesis, but we're, we're getting to that. Okay, I'm going to give you all 30 seconds. Telophase versus prophase, what do you notice is a relationship between them? So the nuclear membrane started to break down in prophase, what's happening in telophase? Reforming. The spindle fibers were formed in prophase. What's happening in telophase? Are they there? So, what's the relationship of prophase and telophase? There you go. Do you remember that? It can make your life easier, right? So, you know what happened in prophase, you know what happened in telophase. The exact opposite. Does that make sense to everyone? Good. And finally, we have cytokinesis. Now, what Barun mentioned is quite important. There are proteins at the center here, right? These contractile proteins. And the way they work, is they will contract and thus break the two ends of the cell apart. Okay? Now, you will never ever be asked to explain the mechanism of cytokinesis. You never need to actually write pinching of proteins. All you need to know is cytokinesis is a physical splitting into two. Does that make sense? Very good. Now, final question. This is very logical. These daughter cells, will they be the exact same as a parent cell? Exact same to the T. Think about this. So it's an important question. I want to see who is memorizing and who is understanding. Logically, I mean exact same. So put your hand if you think the nucleus is the exact same. And I want the online students as well. Put your hand up if you think the nucleus is the exact same for the daughter cell and the parent cells. I mean the chromosomes. Yeah, I agree. Right? They're exact copies of that parent cell. So they must be identical. But what about size? Imagine you, went my, imagine you underwent mitosis, right? Your ends stretched apart, you got chopped in the middle. Would I have two identically, would you look like the original version? Yeah, look like a horror show, right? So point being, these daughter cells are much smaller than the parent cell. Does that make sense? Now, why is that? Apart from the size thing, why do you think cells want to stay small? Because this could be an exam question. Yes, very good, right? When a cell gets too big, its surface area relative to its volume is not as big. What I mean by that is when a cell gets larger, its volume goes up, but the surface of that cell does not increase at the same rate. Now, imagine a very tiny baby versus a, the biggest, most obese person in the world. Who would make more waste? Bigger person, right? So what happens is a cell gets bigger is that it makes more waste and it needs more nutrients. But can it get those nutrients and can it remove the waste at a fast enough rate? So what happens is as the cell gets bigger, waste starts to increase, right? And if a cell does not split into two in time, it will die because there'll be a buildup of waste that it cannot remove in time. And it will require nutrients that it cannot get in time. So the only thing I want you to write now is mitosis ensures high surface area to volume ratio of cells. That's another lateral thinking point that you need to remember. Okay? Good. Any questions at all? Online students, in-center students, anyone? Any questions at all about mitosis? Now, this is the last thing I want you to remember. The student that asks a ton of questions is typically the student that's more curious and the student that will do better in the HSC. The student that, you know, wants to make sure that they show up is smart by not asking anything, probably the dumbest thing you can do. Because all your questions will be brought up in the exam and you won't know the answer. Okay? So uh, any questions you have, ask now. Lookman? Um, yeah, so just could you reiterate what you said before? The, what was the reason why it has to um, go smaller again? Yeah, the so I guess if you... You can all quick max this as well. You can find the surface area to volume ratio of a cube that's one by one centimeter, and the surface area to volume ratio of a cube that's 10 by 10 centimeters, right? You'll notice that the larger cube has a much smaller surface area to volume ratio. It, what this means is as a cube gets larger, volume increases. We all understand that, right? It's just length cubed, okay? Volume dictates how much or the amount of waste that you produce and the amount of nutrients you get. That's what volume dictates, right? Larger the person, more nutrients they need to maintain the same weight, okay? Surface area is kind of like the size of your mouth. That's a surface, right? It dictates how fast you can get food in there and how fast you can get rid of waste. Okay, that's what surface area dictates, right? So, as we get larger, 
relative to the volume, the surface area decreases. Relative to the volume, right? So what that means is as you get larger and larger, the aperture, the mouth part of the cell, gets smaller and smaller. So can it take in nutrients as fast? No. Can it regurgitate waste as fast? So it builds up, right? You pretty much starve from the inside, and your waste builds up, and the cell will eventually die. The surface area dictates the rate of nutrient intake and waste outtake. As the cell gets larger, it requires more, but it can't get it in or it can't remove the waste out fast enough. So that's why it will eventually die. Does that make sense, Luke? Yep, thank you.